I woke up this morning and my entire town is empty. To preface this, my town has a very small population. I'm not exactly sure how many people lived here, but it was at least a couple thousand. It's the type of town you pass through on a road trip, lots of fields and farmhouses and some neighborhoods. A lot of people in town knew each other due to how small the town is. I was home for Christmas break from college and enjoyed my stay. But I was getting ready to go back to school. Last night I packed my bags as I only had two days left in my break. Last night I was sitting in the living room with my dad, drinking a beer with him while the football game was on and shortly after I went to bed. When I woke up this morning I did as usual. I showered, brushed my teeth and ate some breakfast. My parents weren't home and I figured they were at work. But when I looked at the driveway, I was confused. Their cars were still here. How would they have gotten to work without their cars? I searched the entire house and nobody was here. It was so strange, and I decided to call them. When I called my mom, I could hear a phone ring from her in my dad's bedroom. When I looked inside, I could see that both of their phones were still on the chargers. At this point, I was getting a little freaked out. Who goes somewhere without their phones? What if something bad happened? I didn't want to make a big deal out of this and call the police, so I walked over to my next-door neighbor's house. My neighbor has a wife and young son, and from what I could tell, they were home as their cars were in the driveway. I knocked on the front door and asked, Hello, is anyone home? There was no answer. All I could hear was the sound of a few birds chirping, but other than that, it was silent. I went back inside my house and stayed at the living room window to see if the neighbor would go outside even just to see if a car would drive down my road. There was nothing. I'm really confused as to where everyone is. I even tried to call one of my friends who lives in town, and all I got was ringing and eventually voicemail. Around noon, I decided that I should go fill my car up on gas. I figured that my parents might be home by the time I got back. I grabbed my keys and put on my winter coat. When I was driving, I noticed that there were no cars on the road. Not a single car, as if everyone had decided to stay inside today. I looked at the parking lot at Walmart and saw that it was completely empty. It felt so surreal, like I was in a dream. I pulled into the gas station and started filling up my car. There was silence. Nothing but the sound of the wind and the gas filling up my tank. I had a feeling that I was being watched. You probably know the feeling. You're alone in your house or in a room and you get that feeling. Hello, I shouted, but there was no answer, just the echo of my voice. When I turned around, I could see an old woman watching me from across the street. I could tell that she was an older woman because she was holding a cane. Hello, miss, do you know where everyone is? I asked. The old woman didn't respond. Miss, I asked as I stepped away from my car. Everyone being gone is kind of freaking me out, I said awkwardly and chuckled afterwards. Finally, the old woman reacted. She stuck her arm up and pointed at me. Her mouth opened, and from what I could tell, there was not a single tooth in her mouth. The old woman let out a scratchy scream, as if her throat was dry and she hadn't drank any water all day. I panicked and started backing away towards my car. Sorry, miss. I'll leave you alone now. The old woman kept making that awful screaming noise and started walking across the road to my car. I dashed for my car taking out the gas pump and hopping in, driving away as I could hear the old woman still screaming behind me. I ran throughout my house and found that my parents were still not home. There was no noise, aside from the radiator and the creaking from the wooden floorboards. It's now the late evening and I'm writing this. I have no idea what to do. I'm terrified of what happened at the gas station today. I've never seen that old woman before and I don't understand what's wrong with her. Why was she still here when everyone is apparently gone? Her toothless face will forever burn in my mind. Could I please get some advice of what to do tomorrow? A part of me doesn't want to sleep. I'm afraid that I'll see that old woman's face outside my window. But I need my sleep. Edit. While I was sleeping tonight, I woke up to the sound of crashing glass. I sprung out of bed. I didn't know who or what was outside or inside. I quickly grabbed a sweatshirt and tossed it on, not wanting to be exposed. I opened my bedroom door and downstairs. It was quiet, not a single noise. I walked downstairs to see what could have made that crash. On the dining room floor was broken glass, and the window was broken. 
cool air was flooding in. From behind me I could hear a faint cackling, like the sound of an old woman laughing. I turned to see the old woman from earlier today wearing a nightgown. I could feel the goosebumps on my arms begin to rise. Uh, miss? I asked with a shaky voice. The old woman began to scream, the same way she did earlier today. She charged me and jumped on top of me, her fists flailing as she smacked me over and over again in my face. Blood! She finally screamed in her low, scratchy voice. We want blood! She screamed. I started screaming, struggling to get her off of me. I tossed the old woman off of me to the floor. I grabbed my car keys and fled my house. The woman continued to run after me. I'm still in my car right now. I have no idea what to do, where to go. I'll update you all with a part two tomorrow. For now, I need to get as far away from that woman as possible. Last night, after the break-in and my escape, for some reason I found out that when I went to respond to people on my first post, I, for some reason, cannot type using letters when I try to respond to people. So if I reply to anyone's post, it'll be in numbers, at least until I can somehow fix the problem. Each number corresponds with one from the alphabet. This morning, I woke up in my car. It was cold, and I could still feel the goosebumps I had from last night. Whether it was from the cold or my fear of that old woman was unknown to me. I tried to think about what was going on. Why was that old woman trying to kill me? Who is she? I was reading through the responses on my last post. Someone suggested I go to Walmart and get a survival guide. I'm still debating on whether or not it is safer to live outside as opposed to inside. Unfortunately, I realized that I could not go back to my house anymore. I'd be unsafe there. That old woman knows where I live now. I had no real plan. And as I set my plans on Walmart, I kept thinking about what the old woman said. We want blood. Who is we? I kind of shrugged it off and tried not to think about it. All I could hope was that someone would come into town and find me. I just wish I didn't feel so alone. As I drove to Walmart, I passed by the movie theater. It was very rundown and the owners never took care of it. But I noticed something as I passed by, and it made me slow the car down. Written in what I can only assume was blood, was the words, Crave, crave, crave. I had no idea if it was that crazy old woman who wrote that or what, but I didn't intend on finding out. I drove into the deserted Walmart parking lot. It's funny, normally I could never find parking here, but now I had all the parking I could want. I left my car and walked inside the store. The store surprisingly was not quiet as I thought. A Springsteen song was playing over the loudspeaker. There was an eerie feeling, not being able to hear people speaking to their families or talking on the phone. I pulled a cart out of the row and continued further into the store. Some of the overhead lights flickered, and they nearly sent me into a panic. But I continued through the store, putting canned food in the cart, as well as some fresh foods. I got a small, portable gas stove, some small propane canisters, some small pots, and some big gallon jugs to fill up with water. Again, I had no idea if it was safer to live indoors or outdoors at this point. While walking around the tech aisles, I bumped into a shelf of Xbox games and a bunch of them fell on me in the floor. The sound echoed throughout the entire store. I sighed and started picking up the games. When I stood back up, a middle-aged man was staring at me a few aisles down. I paused for a moment, not knowing if he was like the old lady from last night. I was right. The man began to charge me, but I turned and ran in the opposite direction. I ran into the sporting goods aisle hearing the fast-paced footsteps behind me. I turned to my left and grabbed what was closest. It was a baseball bat. The man was getting closer, only a few feet away from me before he said it. We want- I smacked him across the face with the baseball bat and he immediately collapsed to the floor. I walked back to my cart, and as I grabbed onto the cart, my phone rang. I took my phone out of my pocket to find that my girlfriend, Nancy, was calling me. I answered the call. On the other end was static. Nancy, I asked. S, I heard. Nancy, I shouted. SS. I was about to hang up when I heard S Sam. The call ended. I tried calling her back, but to no avail. I started walking out of the store and stopped when I saw the old woman from last night. She was standing next to my car. Even from the storefront, I could see the toothless smile on her face. The goosebumps came back, but I knew that I couldn't go back into the store. I started pushing the cart towards my car, closer and closer until I was within feet of the old woman. 
We want blood. We crave blood, she nearly shouted. I pushed the cart into her, knocking her to the ground. I pushed the cart to the other side of my car and quickly tossed everything into the back seat. When I looked up, the old lady started to get to her feet, and the man from the store was now outside and running toward my car. I opened my car door and hopped inside, locking the door as soon as I sat down. I started the car. The two demented people began banging on the windows of my car. I put the car into drive and drove away. I'm still on the road and not too far from the Walmart. Those two are still looking for me and I have no idea how many of them there are. If anyone has any idea of what is happening or what they could be, please tell me. I will update with an edit in a few hours and a part three as soon as I can. I think tomorrow I'm going to try to leave town. Forward. I've been posting these on my phone but figured out that I can respond to comments using a laptop I found last night. So all is good now. After posting part two, I drove around for a while not knowing where to go or stay for the night. As I was driving, I remembered my friend Eric from high school. We used to hang out at his house all the time. I remembered that the spare key to the house was inside of the grill in his backyard. All I would have to do was drive over and get the key, and I'd have safe shelter for the night. There was one more place left to go, though. I drove back to my house. My dad had his pistol permit for a few years, and he kept a Glock 19 in a lockbox next to his bed. Before exiting the car, I grabbed the baseball bat from the back seat. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I walked into the house and up the stairs quickly. I didn't want to waste any more time needed in that house. I grabbed the key to the lockbox from my dad's sock drawer and unlocked the lockbox. I picked up the handgun and two boxes of ammo. I bolted out of the house and back to my car. When I finally made it inside of Eric's house, I turned the heat on and set down my things. Afterwards, I shut all of the curtains and slept until morning. It was a good night of sleep. When I woke up the next morning, I opened a can of sliced pineapple and ate that for breakfast. I was really in a rush. I couldn't wait to leave town and talk to real people again. I packed up my things and walked outside, but stopped at the first step when I saw them. Five of those things were standing in the road, with the old woman being the one standing in front of them, like she was leading them. I felt paralyzed with fear, like I couldn't move. Finally, I reached behind me, grabbing the Glock and turning the safety off. Now listen, I, I don't want any trouble, I muttered. I looked at them carefully. There was the old woman, the middle-aged man from yesterday, a child that looked to be of middle school age, a woman my age, and an old man wearing overalls. They all took a step towards me. I raised the gun. Hey! I said I don't want any trouble, I shouted. They stepped again. We crave blood, they said in unison. I unlocked the car. I'm gonna get in the car now, just please, let me go. Blood, 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 they said as they started walking toward me. I'm fucking warning you, I shouted. The old man charged me first. All I can really remember is squeezing the trigger and hearing the gunshot. I didn't look to see where I hit him. All I know is I did. They all started to charge me, but I didn't care. I ran for the car and got out of there as quick as possible. I started to think about how they could have found me, and then I started to realize it's heat. They can find me by heat. I started driving to the outside of town and let out a sigh of relief as I passed by the sign. Confusion began to set in after 30 minutes when I realized I drove back into town. I tried to leave again and ended up back in town, then again and again. Finally, I just gave up. As I drove back into town, I noticed something weird. There was tons of those things by the landfill. Some were throwing trash into a huge bonfire, as big as a house, and some were just standing there, staring up at it. Currently, I'm sitting on the side of the road. I'll update with a part four as soon as I can. I don't know if the next part will be the last, but I'm going to that landfill, and I'm going to find out what is going on. The black smoke filled the air. The stench of the landfill smelled of garbage, excrement, and burning flesh. I was on top of a hill next to the landfill, out of sight from the corrupted group of people. I say corrupted because those people, as you've read before, are not themselves. And it seems very clear that something is horribly wrong with them. What the fuck? I whispered. In the center of the landfill, there was a big wooden table. 
Two of those corrupted people, one man, one woman, were dragging a man about my age toward the wooden table. Get the fuck off of me, you psychotic fucks! He screamed. The man sounded terrified. It took me a moment to realize that he was different. The man wasn't corrupted. He was normal like me. The two put the man on the table and strapped him in. N no, no, please, he shouted. The old woman that I saw on the first day strutted over to the table with a knife in her hands, holding it as if it were a child. Don't, please don't, the man screamed. We want blood, they said in unison. The old woman brought the knife down onto the man's chest, sliding the knife down to his belly. Blood began to squirt onto the ground, guts began to spill, and the man began to foam at the mouth as if he was overdosing. I almost screamed until I heard it. There was a low rumble, followed by what sounded like a voice, a deep, loud voice, speaking some sort of gibberish. I couldn't figure out what it meant. The old woman took the straps off of the now deceased man. I was about to go back to the car when I saw something I wish I didn't. The man began to levitate into the air and float toward the garbage pile. I couldn't see much, but I saw, or I think I saw some sort of tentacle grab the man. I didn't see where the man went, but I can only assume that whatever was in that landfill took him. A couple of seconds after seeing that, my phone began to ring. I tried to silence it, but it was too late. Those things heard it and were running in my direction. I stood up and started sprinting back to my car. I didn't see how many were running after me, but if I had to guess, it was over 30 of them. I managed to make it back to my car as they started coming over the hill. Panic and terror set in as I could see the old woman. I put my car in drive and drove past the crowd. All of them screamed. Whatever those things are, they aren't human. Not anymore. They may look like us, but they aren't us. I think that whatever is in the landfill is making them do these things. I checked my phone to see who had called. It was Nancy. I called back immediately. There was ringing then. Someone answered the phone. Nancy? I asked. S. Sam? She asked. Nancy, where are you? I shouted. I'm with your parents. We're at your H house, she said. Okay, I'll be right there, I screamed, and I continued driving, speeding up. When I arrived at my house, I honked the horn a couple of times outside. I was confused. Nobody came running out. I turned the car off and ran inside. Mom, Dad, Nancy, I screamed. Silence. I took out my phone and called Nancy. She picked up immediately. Nancy, where are you? I asked. Sam, we're at your house, she said. What do you mean? I'm here, I muttered. There was silence on the other end of the phone. S. Sam, other than me and your parents, the house is empty. The call ended, and all I could think of was answers. How is that possible? I was in the house the same time that they were, so where are they? There was a knock at the door, and I walked over to investigate. It was a group of people, five of them to be exact. All of them were armed with rifles, handguns, and some kind of weapon to swing. Hello? I asked. The woman standing in front of the others began to speak. You're new, aren't you? But you've seen them, right? The corrupted? It's been a few hours now. I'm with that group. We're hiding out in a farmhouse near the edge of town. There was the girl in the front, Andrea, then Thomas, Frank, Jane, and lastly James. The man that I saw get killed at the landfill today, that was their friend Marcus. I guess he was out scouting with them when the corrupted came and took him to the landfill. Thomas has a theory. He thinks that whatever that thing is in the landfill is some sort of god. He thinks that we aren't in our world anymore, just one that looks and sounds like ours. As if everything was copied and pasted into a blank slate. I told him about a comment left on here, about it being an anomaly. He thought it was a good working theory, but he's not entirely sure what it is either. I'm going to keep writing to you all until I figure out how to leave this place. I don't know when you'll see a part five, because if I'm being honest, I don't know if I'll be alive in a few days. But if I am, I will tell you all. Until then, Sam.